Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, reading in the word of the Lord. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. I think I'd be a little nervous. I think I'd be a little scared. An angelic being comes into the very room that I'm in and manifests itself and starts talking to me. I'd be a little frightened. In verse 30, the angel recognizes that she is frightened. So the angel says, fear not, for she was afraid. And Mary, he says, thou hast found favor with God. You do not have to be afraid when the heavenlies come down to visit you. You don't have to be afraid when something you're not familiar with or accustomed to visits you from heaven. In fact, you are finding the favor of of God to be in the house of God today and to feel things you are not accustomed to or used to you sometimes your flesh reacts out of fear out of worry like what in the world am I feeling what is going on in this atmosphere but the truth is you are finding favor with God I want the favor of God I want God to look at me and give me a thumbs up Verse 31, behold, you will conceive in your womb. You will have a son and you will call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. And Mary, she's kind of doing the math here and she's, you know, uh, she tries to figure this out. Okay, I, I am a virgin. I've never been in a relationship with a man. I am engaged, and, uh, uh, and I, I, I don't know how on earth I'm going to have a child. It's just not scientifically possible. And so she asked the obvious question, how is this possible for me to have a kid, being that I do not know a man? I am not in relationship. I've never been in relationship with a man. In verse 35, the answer from the angel is this, the Holy Ghost. Someone say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Someone say overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. I love this verse. If you need a memory verse, a short one, a simple one that you need to write down and maybe tape on your bathroom mirror so you have a mantra for the morning. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so Mary replies to that angel, Behold your handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me. I grant you permission. Everything you said, let it happen according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I want to focus on a word out of verse 35 for these next few weeks. And up until Christmas time, I want to be focusing on this Christmas story, this segment. And I want to talk about that verse that we read where the angel of the Lord said that the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. And with the help of the Lord, we're going to hear from God. And he's going to move in this place. If we would lift up our hands and we would be sensitive to God right now. And would you speak the name of Jesus with faith? And would you ask God to help you? Even if you feel like you're so disinterested and disconnected from this service, right now make it your prayer. God, I want to hear you today. God, I want to receive a word from you today, Jesus. For with you, God, all things are possible possible to them that believe. I believe today for something impossible. And someone say in Jesus' name, amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Overshadowed. Overshadowed. Looking up in the Strong's Concordance, the original language that the Bible is written in, 
And looking at the Greek, the word overshadowed primarily means to cast a shade upon. Now, in our culture today, someone throwing shade on you is a negative concept. You know, why are you throwing shade on my parade? You know, you're trying to do something, you're getting your your five minutes of fame, and no sooner than you are in your first minute of the applause of the crowd, someone else overshadows you, and they get the limelight, they get the attention. They just rained on your parade, they're throwing shade. Here you are trying to, you know, rejoice in in, in something. It's like I uh, at, at Starbucks when I worked there, we, we were kind of competitive. It's probably because I'm a little competitive. And uh, my subliminal uh, approach to creative com- a p- competitive nature at, on the espresso machine, uh, I never said this to anybody, but it was why I would compete, not just because I'm a competitive person, but uh, competition sometimes brings out more of people. Instead of just a mundane basketball game, instead of just mediocrity on the, the floor, if you start talking trash while you're playing basketball and, 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 and start trying to, you know, agitate people, they'll rise to a higher level of competition. And uh, being from uh, um, Starbucks in Indianapolis, moving out here to a place where there was not a, co- a coffee culture, uh, people making drinks on the espresso machine, the the lattes and and the cappuccinos, they were subpar to say the least, or maybe the best. It was not very good, and so I was pretty good at making lattes, and so I would just kind of tr- uh, uh, start like going next to someone that's making a drink, and I say, man, that's that's not that good looking. That's 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 pretty bad. I could do that faster, and I just start kind of throwing little things in there, and it sounds stupid and silly, but. After a while, that competitive nature, people would just kind of get a little mad with me or agitated, and they would try to up their game and know a little more information about the beverage. And, and uh, there was a, a screen that had the time as to which when someone would place an order to the point they got that order and the car was off. And so I would always let people know how fast of a time the person from the speaker placing their order to them having the drink in their hand. And I would announce to people how fast it was. And so that competitive nature would happen. Somebody uh, would make latte art. I started doing latte art. It wasn't something Starbucks did, but I would look up at YouTube videos and, and like to make designs on the, the, the top of the drink. And so people would start participating and trying to do that. And so they would feel pretty good. They would show their, uh, their, their latte art on top. And then after looking at it, then I would throw some shade on there. I would let them see my Rosetta. I'd like, to, I'd like them to see the heart that I put on top of that. And so they would have their fun little moment, but then I always would be so ever kind to let them know who is the best barista there at Starbucks. I was just my very nice, humble manner that I had. But really, Starbucks, uh, at the time we were there, we had a great team, and we started handing out drinks fast. The quality went up. But when we read here in the Scripture about Mary who is a virgin, who cannot have child. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost would overshadow her. One could say, you know, here's the angel paying her a compliment. You are highly favored of the Lord. But then the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. So no matter how great you think you are, the Holy Ghost is greater. Now, there is truth to that. There's absolute truth to that. Whatever compliment God pays us, God is infinitely greater. He deserves to throw a little shade on our parade. The moment we feel good about ourselves, the Bible says, no, there's none righteous. No, not one. Our righteousnesses are as filthy rags unto the Lord. But the verse where it says the Lord would overshadow her, the word means more than just to cast a shade upon. That word means to envelop in a haze of brilliancy. God is not there just to throw some shade on you to make you feel insignificant. The shade that you get from God is to envelop you in the brilliancy of God's divine nature. Mary would not be just merely cast a shadow on, but the brilliance of God would absolutely envelop her. But the word 
goes on to mean more than that. The word means to invest with preternatural influence. The word that we ought to focus on is invest. God does not just want to cast a shadow and throw some shade on us today. And God doesn't merely just want us to be surrounded by his brilliance and this haze of glory. God wants to invest something in us. God wasn't just interested in saying, Mary, I'm better than you. I'm more superior than you. God, God was not just merely interested in, look at all my glory that is around you. God wanted to impart something. God wanted to invest something in Mary in that moment. And that word that means to overshadow means to invest with a preternatural investment influence. That word preternatural, we're more familiar with saying the phrase supernatural. It means this, that which is beyond natural and normal. Mary says, how is this even possible? The angel says, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. The Holy Ghost is not just going to throw some shade on you. And the Holy Ghost is not just going to make you enter into a haze of God's brilliance. The Holy Ghost is going to invest inside of you something that is beyond the normal and beyond the natural. For it is not normal for a virgin to have a child. It is not natural for a virgin to have child. God says the Holy Ghost is going to do something that is beyond the normal, beyond the mundane, beyond the average, beyond the ordinary, beyond what nature comprehends. Is there somebody here today that would like the Holy Ghost to invest in you today? You would like the very Spirit of God Almighty to put something inside of you that is beyond normal. Would you lift your hands? Would you lift your voice right now and say, God, overshadow me today. Lord, I pray that you would overshadow me, Lord. In Jesus' name, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Eight chapters later, but more than eight days or eight years later, Jesus is now 33 years old approximately. Somewhere between the age of 30 and 33, Jesus is now, or he's around the age of 33, as he's encroaching on the, the last of his days of earthly ministry before he is crucified and buried and resurrected, ascended into heaven. The Bible says in Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 34, that Jesus took Peter, James, and John. You'll see this phrase in the Bible numerous of times. Jesus had multitudes follow him, but only 12 were close to him. But of those 12, there was three that were at places with Jesus. Other people weren't. Do not get mad, envious, or jealous if it appears at times that God has favorites in this church building. Now, we are all equal, but there's some people that don't have the equal desire that you have for the things of God. And so they are in a passionate pursuit for the deeper things of God. And those that are wanting and trying and making an effort, if you feel God never answers your prayer, why don't you more passionately pursue him in your prayers? For God is drawn to passion. God is drawn to diligence. And these men were diligent about God. And so Jesus wasn't playing favor saying, ah, look at these guys are better than you. They were all on the same level but they had a different level of interest and pursuit of Jesus. So he took Peter, James, and John to this area where Jesus began to pray. As Jesus began to pray, the disciples fell asleep. And the Bible says that while Jesus was praying, his complete countenance, his outward appearance began to change. His uh, uh, clothes began to illuminate and shine light. It was white and glistening. Verse 30, Jesus began to talk to Moses and Elijah on that mountain. And they appeared in the glory. They spake uh, to one another. And then the Bible says in verse 32 that Peter woke up. Then the disciples woke up. They were heavy with sleep. 
And when they were awake, they saw his glory. Be very careful that you don't fall asleep in church, that you don't fall asleep in the house of God. I'm not talking about literal that you like lay out and take a nap. I'm talking about your interest in the things of God. As he's trying to draw you closer to him, don't just fall asleep because you'll miss the glory. But they did not miss the glory when they woke up. I would to God that we would wake up inside and say, Jesus, I'm in interested in more of you. I want to see your glory. Let us not be at ease in Zion, but let us be wide awake saying, God, I want more of you. And the Bible says when they woke up, they saw his glory. They didn't see God's glory sleeping. They saw God's glory awake. And the Bible says it came to pass. They departed. Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to build three tabernacles, three buildings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And he didn't really know what he was saying. But as he was speaking, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And as this cloud overshadowed them, they feared as they entered into the cloud. Listen to me. You might fear being overshadowed as you enter into the cloud of the Holy Ghost, but remember why it is overshadowing you. It is for the preternatural. It is for the spirit to invest that which is beyond the normal or the natural. If you are here today and you're not familiar with the presence of the Holy Ghost, people praying in weird languages, speaking in other tongues, and that just seems awkward when people raise their hands and wave it and they're crying or they're jumping or leaping. I know it may feel awkward awkward or uncomfortable when you begin to be around the Holy Ghost and it surrounds you. It feels like it's throwing some shade your way. It feels as if that you are now coming to a realization there's something brilliant about this. I'm in a haze that is amazing. This is not like some haze in, 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 in some house where everyone's smoking marijuana. I'm talking about this is a glorious thing. This is an awesome thing. This is a beautiful thing with no regrets and no hangups. But as you are in that very haze of God's brilliance, sometimes you can feel fearful because you know your flesh, you know you're inadequate, you know if you've sinned, you know you have messed up, but know why God is allowing you to feel his presence is because he's wanting to invest his presence in you. He's not trying to make you feel inferior. He's not trying to make you feel pathetic. He is letting you know the only reason why I am overshadowing you is because you found favor with God because I have looked at you and said you know what you need to feel my presence one more time you need to know that there's a God that cares about you and loves you and knows your name that's why you're here right now you might feel awkward you might feel out of place you might feel uncomfortable you might feel like this is just a weird predicament to be in but i'm letting you know the haze that you are in the brilliancy that is all around you is because there's a god saying i want to do something beyond the normal in your life i'm wanting to do something beyond the natural in your life i have overshadowed you because you've found favor with me think of all the 7 plus billion people in the world and how many of those billions have not felt what you're feeling right now think of you that you've been you've been coming here recently and you like what you feel and think about all the years you've never felt that you're living in a time where you found favor with god and he says now i'm going to overshadow you you found my favor Noah found grace in the sight of God. You are finding God's grace. And so now this overwhelming presence of God is coming upon you. The Spirit wants to invest that which is beyond normal, that which is beyond natural. He wants to overshadow somebody here today. Last portion of Scripture, and I'm done. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And there were some people that were scared to join the church because, you know, they were worried about what people might think if they joined the church. 
Now, man, they might think I'm nuts. They might think I'm crazy. They might think I'm in some sort of cult. They might think I've lost my mind, and, and, and so I, I don't want to lose my reputation. And so people wanted to join the church, but they wouldn't join the church out of fear, and so they would rather please men than they would please God. And but... There were some people that still didn't care what others thought, and so they were added to the church. The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved, multitudes, both men and women. Now, look at, look at the progress here. You have the disciples, Peter, James, John, and the others, who, who didn't know anything about Jesus, and, and now Jesus is drawing them closer, and they're on top of the mountain, and they are in this moment of transfiguration, and, and they're seeing Jesus in his glory, and then the, 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 the presence, the glory of God overshadows them, and they were afraid, and, and you even see that there was a fear about Peter when Jesus was being crucified, and the disciples fled from the presence of Jesus. They were afraid. Remember, the angel said, fear not. There's a reason why the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. There's a reason why the Holy Ghost is overshadowing you. Fear not, you have found favor. But the disciples flee, and Peter denies Jesus three times, even curses him. But after Jesus rises from the dead, after he's crucified, and he tells him to pray for the Holy Ghost, not just to merely cast some shade on you, not merely to envelop you in a haze of brilliancy, but to invest in you. And the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, pours out upon Peter and the apostles and the other hundred plus people in that room. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost, they feel like they're overshadowed. There's cloven tongues and, and all of a sudden there's a haze of brilliancy, a sound of a rushing mighty wind. But all of a sudden the Holy Ghost invests in them. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. And Peter stands up, a man that was in fear, now stands up in faith. Now look at Peter here. The Bible says in verse 15, all these crowds in all the city of Jerusalem brought the sick into the streets. They laid the sick people on beds and couches. So at the very least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. At first, when you come to church, when you start hearing the truth about the Holy Ghost, it overshadows you. It, it, it throws some shade your way, and you feel how inferior you are. But then you realize you found favor, and there's a brilliancy around this place. But God doesn't want to stop there. He wants to invest in somebody today. He doesn't want the Holy Ghost to just be around you. He wants the Holy Ghost to be within you. And when the Holy Ghost landed within Peter. Now Peter has the Holy Ghost flowing through his veins like a river of living water. And now it's not just the Holy Ghost that casts shade on him. It's the Holy Ghost flowing through him, casting shade on others. All of a sudden, people are following Peter, noticing there's a haze of brilliance when this man preaches, when he walks, when he talks, and when he prays. And the people said, oh, if I can just get under the shadow of Peter just so his presence can overshadow. This scripture is not teaching that you somehow become a demigod or some sort of mini deity. It's just saying that deity has immersed its spirit inside of you. And now you are not your own. You have been purchased by God. And he's at the, the steering wheel of your heart. And he's leading you and guiding you. And now you are able to instill faith and inspire people to believe for the supernatural. That which which is not normal, that which is beyond nature. And the Bible says, Peter walking by, people just wanted to be in his shadow, hoping that he just walked by, he would overshadow them. And when Peter began to overshadow them, the multitudes of the cities that were around Jerusalem that brought their six folks to them and brought those that were filled with unclean spirits, demonic spirits, dark forces, the Bible says they were healed every one. They were healed every one. Someone needs to hear me today. I'm coming to a close. I want us to stand together right now. The Holy Ghost is here. 
the very presence of God is here today. And the Lord laid this on my heart. All I was doing was praying, and God just threw one word in my mind, and that was overshadow. And so I just kind of read some scriptures through that Christmas section and the scripture and notice that this word overshadow, what it meant. And just the thoughts, God began to just bring this, this fluid thought emotion through my mind of what God wants to do for somebody here today. You come to church, and I know it can feel overwhelming or intimidating in the presence of God because it seems like there's, there's these people around you that you think they possibly may feel they're better than you. But nobody here is better than you you throwing some shade your way everybody here has been under the shade of the holy ghost surrounded by its brilliancy that haze of glory but see god he doesn't want to throw shade your way he wants to envelop you in a haze of brilliancy yes so you see his glory but god wants more than you just to see and feel the presence of god the focus is on invest you cannot invest unless there's a deposit God wants to deposit his spirit into you today. God wants to deposit his presence into you today. God wants the preternatural to happen. That which is beyond normal and that which is beyond natural. God doesn't just want you to feel him. God wants you to be filled with him. God wants you to have that feeling that you feel on the outside to be full inside of your heart today. I want us to gather around this altar together right now. In the name of Jesus, can we all come together? Can we all gather this way? No one feels left out. No one feels awkward. No one feels intimidated. I want us to all gather around this altar. Hallelujah. 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 If you're here and you don't have an ever-loving clue what to do right now, don't feel, don't feel dumb. Don't feel stupid. Don't feel intimidated. Everybody here has that moment, like Mary, when you simply find yourself under the shade of God's glory. And God's not trying to intimidate you. God's trying to indicate to you that you found favor, that you are here right now and can feel and hear what you are hearing. Is God letting you know that you have found his favor? There are billions of people in this world that have never felt what you have felt. Never. There's billions of people in this world that have never heard the name of Jesus, never have cried with tears of joy. It's always been tears of fear and intimidation and all this this worry and stress. You are here. And the reason why that emotion is stirring inside of you right now is you are under the shadow of the Almighty, meaning you have found his favor. But God is going to do more than just let you know he's here. God's going to let you know he's within you. And he lets you know when he's within you because the Bible says these signs will follow them that believe they shall speak with new tongues. That is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you would like to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost today, God wants to fill somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God wants to renew somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. God wants to overshadow somebody here today. But you have to do what Mary did. You know what she did? Be it unto me, according to your word. And what you just heard today is the word of God. And you got to make up in your mind, do you want that to happen to you or not happen to you? If you want that to happen to you, and you want the God God of all creation to overshadow you right now, and you be filled with that very presence that is casting that shadow, you just simply need to lift up your hands and your voice And you begin to need to empty yourself saying, God, everything that is inside of my life, I empty it right now by praying it out loud. I speak the things that are inside of me right now that I want out, that I regret, that I know are wrong that are hurting, that are remorseful, that are things I wish I never would have done. God, I voice them to you right now. And as you begin to speak every single one of those things, that is repentance, that's confession, and you are letting it out. And as you are emptying yourself, you are allowing there to be room for the Holy Ghost to fill and to have residence in your heart. If you are interested in that right now, if you have never been baptized with the Holy Ghost, I would like you to come to the front of this this area as close as you can. If you've never been filled with the Holy 
Holy Ghost and you would like to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You feel the overshadowing presence of God, but you don't want just the shadow of God's presence. You want the actual presence that's casting that shadow within you. That's for you today. And what I mean by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you have never prayed in another language, praying in other tongues, not a learned language, an unlearned language, that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost today. But he's not going to fill you with your mouth closed, not saying sorry. But if you open your mouth and say, God, I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Lord, I empty myself of everything I've ever done wrong. And Lord, I ask you to clean my heart. I ask you to forgive me. When you begin to do that, after we have a time of doing that prayer, we're going to begin to thank God for emptying those things out of us and giving us the favor to be here today, to let us hear what we're hearing today. And as we begin to thank him and praise him, God's spirit that's casting that shadow, that you feel that haze of brilliance around you is going to be within you. God's going to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But do not try to figure it out. Do not try to control your prayers, but yield and surrender your language to God and let God take over. And God's going to let you know. And you'll know you're right there once you begin to feel your lips quiver and your tongue stammer and you trip over your words. You are right at the brink of God taking over. If you would like that right now, would you lift your hands? And I would like some altar workers to pray with each person here today. And I want you to help them pray through repentance right now and begin to pray is that example. Would you lift your voice? Come on, every person praying right now. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask Jesus that you would create in me a clean heart, oh God.